The Road to War. Written and narrated by John Miro. Get more at servingworlds.com. 33. Lee studied his team. Scott Kincaid had one hand ready on the door, wiped sweat from his face with the other. Angel crouched a foot behind, face all concentration, weapon in his hands, hot. Doctors Bonner and Lockman fell in on either side of Bone. I can walk, Bowen slurred down at Dr. Bonner. His current walking partner was red-faced and straining under Bowen's outstretched arm, but Lee could see the soldier was struggling just to stay conscious. Stow it, Bone, Lee ordered, as if he'd been ordering him all his life. And just as if Bowen had been taking his orders all his life, he stowed it. Yes, sir. Lee pointed at Scott. The terrified doctor cracked the door wide, then jumped back as Willard limped out, weapons sweeping up and all around. Sweep complete, Willard nodded back at Lee. Go, 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 Lee whispered, putting some steel in his voice, and the line moved out the door. Lee balanced in a low crouch, turning 360 degrees as he ran. The roof of the pod was empty, as were the spaces around the pods to the left and right. By previous agreement, the group crossed straight to the far wall. Dr. Lackman quickly skirted under Bowen's shoulder when they reached the wall, replacing Dr. Bonner as human crutch and the group continued left towards the entrance to Spoke 3. Before leaving the pod, Lee pressed his secondary wrist implant against a data screen to call up the wheel's access logs. None of the pressure doors had opened or closed since Willard and Bowen's arrival. Janine and her favorite doctor were both hiding out somewhere on the wheel. Once they escaped the wheel to where wireless worked again, they would call for reinforcements, Evacuate the doctors on the tender docked below, and Lee would order Angel to fly the passengers to safety. Yes, Mentel was a genius, but Lee wouldn't risk the safety of the entire team to save her. Mentel might already be a pincushion, he reasoned, in which case getting these three doctors and their critical knowledge to safety was the new objective. Once the tender was away with the others aboard, Lee would return to the wheel alone to retrieve Dr. Mentel. He'd even bring her out alive, if and when he found her in that condition. When they reached the foot of spoke three, Scott triggered the pressure door. He sidestepped out of Willard's way again, then circled back to take Dr. Lackman's place supporting Bowen. Thanks, Scotty, Bowen said, head lolling. Scotty let the concern in his eyes show only to Lee as he took more of Bowen's weight. No problem, he groaned. Wait till you see my bill. The group moved into the spoke. Gun still leveled, Lee slapped his palm over the interior control panel, and the door reversed its upward climb to close without incident. Lee still kept his gaze and his aim on the door until they made their way past the second of the spoke's three pressure doors. Then he kept his focus on that door, while the group moved slowly on down the corridor towards the elevators at the center. I'm good, Scotty grunted, waving the overweight Dr. Bonner off and extending his turn as Bowen's walking partner. Kill for a whiskey, though, he told Lee with a ragged grin. Lee reversed his glance back to the doors behind them, offering only silent rebuke to the younger man's attempt to connect. Lee kept walking forward at a good clip with his body turned sideways and the butt of the assault rifle against his shoulder covering the door behind them. Concentrating inward for a moment, he lowered the volume on the pain receptors in his collarbone where the weapon rubbed against a festering, implanted disc. A vision of some moment in the long past flashed through his mind. It was Scotty, dabbing antibiotic ointment over that very emitter. This should help, the doctor had murmured, very gently cleaning the festering wound. I'll buy the second round, Lee grunted a moment later. Scotty flashed him a look of relief and gratitude. That'd be great, he said, trying to play down his emotions. Owe me one too, Doc, Bowen grunted. Way you're feeling me up. Lee and Dr. Kincaid, Scotty, both grinned. Stow it, Stow bone. It bone, they said together. Just before the door ahead of them roared to life and flew upwards.
You have been listening to Reach, The Road to War. Written and narrated by John Miro. Music, all this, by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Hear more of the story at ServingWorlds.com. Thank you for listening.